This is Control Structure, episode 152, for February 12th, 2019. Big week to everyone listening. This show has notes. Visit thenexus.tv slash cs152 to see them. I'm Stephen Orvis, and with me is the other host, Andrew Billy. Hi, Andrew. We have got an order to suspend your social at very right moment. Okay... Moving on. So, have you been getting a whole bunch of spam voicemail recently? No. Because I've been getting, like, tons of calls. I think they're all from, like, a Maryland uh, phone numbers. Do you not use Google Voice and have them blocked, though? No. I just look at my phone, and I'm like, I don't recognize this number. Oh, okay. And, like, especially today, like, I've got two of these phone calls... And it actually came up on my phone as, like, a spam caller. Mm. So, uh, yeah. Someone is, like, really trying to get people's social security numbers and doesn't know how to use English <laughs> at the very right moment. <laughs> that is an important moment to use it. <laughs> All right. Anyways, speaking of phones and things like that, have you ever wanted to build your own dial-up ISP? We're not going to shout Raspberry? Oh, right. Raspberry? Raspberry! Raspberry? (laughs) Raspberry! (laughs) Okay, go on. Anyways, about this ISP, um, you two could run your own dial-up ISP server and ironically host it on the internet through VRIP. And have people connecting to it and using internet through your internet through the VoIP connection. Yeah, uh, you might want to use it to, you know, have your virtual machines in your virtual machines. That's a good idea. Then you could run Minecraft and put computers in Minecraft and run... Anyways. (laughs) (laughs) So this was a kind of neat project. The guy got an old modem and then he got a a USB to serial connector eye. And uh, hooked up his Raspberry Pi to it to run run his server. So y- you can just have a you know you can run a dial up ISP just like the good old days. Yes. When you didn't run an ISP. No. <laughs> but I used to connect to them. Yeah, most people. Well, most people in the know did that back then. Mm. It's like yeah, because even back then, I don't think that most people actually did this. Yeah, it's more of an obscure thing to be able to do something like this. Yeah. I remember reading, you know, about way back when, when, you know, before the, the real internet, internet, it was a big deal to, you know, you dial into some university and connect up and grab files from off their servers or something. Yeah, and uh, it was really annoying that a lot of them, like, you could only download things if you uploaded something in return. So, like, the servers would get full, like, immediately. <laughs> Full of like useless junk that you know hardly anybody wanted, and Here's no one. Another could... picture of a cat, and no one could download anything because you couldn't upload anything. Yeah. That's <laughs> jerks. Uh, so, one thing that uh, we didn't have back then was Firefox. No. Well, unless you used Firefox until about two thousand five, like me. I was thinking way, way back when... Like, 90s era. Yeah, because, I mean, using the, the terminal web browsers and things like that. And, oh, good old Lynx. Yeah. Um, so, Firefox uh, released version 65, and uh, with better image compression uh, standards, uh, or standard, rather, uh, WebP, which uh, Google released, I don't know, over five years ago. Seven years ago, maybe? Uh, so it is essentially just uh, like the still frame of a video format, which, mm. you know, I guess they've, you know, tweaked the uh, encoder a little bit to make it a little bit more efficient. Uh, to It supports both lossy and lossless modes. Uh, so you can get about 25% smaller than PNG and about 25 to 35% smaller JPEGs. Or That's pretty good. Than JPEG, rather. It also has a support for AV1, which is a uh, improved video codec. So have you ever heard of H.264? Vaguely, but I don't know too much. Yeah, it's essentially the video codec used for Blu-rays. Okay. 
uh, which uh, you know, that's been iterated on for H.265, uh, which is what AV1 competes mm-hmm. with. Okay. Uh, so, you know, sp- you know, like a more efficient uh, codec, you know, smaller files, less to be transferred and all that. So if you use RAID, you should probably know that it's not a backup. So, uh, so if you have RAID or use or tested another RAID system before you set up your current system of RAID, uh, beware. Your data might be overwritten while trying to fix it or migrated to some other system. So, just this one story of a guy who, you know, got, you know, this shiny new server 10 years ago or 12 years ago or however, uh, the, Server supported, like, two kinds of RAID, uh, so he tried both of them out and decided, you know, which one to go with, which seemed reasonable at the time, until he tried to put in, put the disks into another machine, you know, because he's, you know, migrating everything, and, uh, Linux, uh, internally picks up two kinds of RAID, because the metadata on the drives, like, do not overwrite each other, Mm. apparently, so Linux picked the wrong one and, you know, tried to synchronize and duplicate, you know, the information as, you know, instructed Without by... Without asking for permission, it just assumed. Yes, that you wanted your uh, RAID array to, you know, be fixed and everything, which involves copying over data that, you know, is quite valuable <laughs> and destroys it. How does the uh, moral of the story was good? Because you were saying basically he was doing a backup of the system... And he rebooted it into a live CD, and uh, that was kind of when his problem started. Uh, but he was saying that before you tried a new backup system, which is what he was doing, use the old backup system first, get a good backup, then go ahead and try the new backup system. Uh, uh, shout out to uh, International Backup Awareness Day, uh, uh, by the way, um, which... Uh, Speaking of, uh, yesterday I recorded a show with uh, Buckface, and it was talking about uh, like minimalizing your digital life, mm-hmm. and as part of that was a section on backups, which I uh, came in to uh, talk for a little bit on. And also, the rest of the network does podcasts totally differently now. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so remember how in the olden days we would just, you know, have a hangout with Ryan and he would, like, record everything? Mm-hmm. So I'm, you know, having a hangout with Ian, thinking that, yeah, he's recording everything. Turns out I was supposed to be recording too. <laughs> oh. So you lost, like, your side of the <laughs> Pretty much. podcast? So he's so, just talking himself the whole time? No. Uh, that was essentially a dry run. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. So we did a talk again. <laughs> Uh, fun times. You know what al- is also fun times? Base 64. So, uh, in my blog, I have a few data URIs, which is, uh, the contents of, like, whatever file I'm pointing to, whatever resource I'm pointing to, uh, and just put it straight into the URL. Uh, the downside is Base 64 expands the data a little bit. So it's not like pure binary. Uh, so for three bytes, there's four bytes of base 64, um, which means that it's there's quite a bit of redundancy in there. It could compress pretty well. Uh, so on the web, we have this gzip compression that squashes things down. And it turns out that you know putting things into base 64 and then doing gzip on them... Um, is only a negligible size increase, uh, maybe five to two percent, two percent to five percent bigger. Uh, again, depending on you know what exactly you're compressing, mm-hmm. and uh, you know this these examples are for you know PNGs and JPEGs, things that don't exactly compress well to begin with. Yeah. So I'm wondering if you know maybe some like an HTML file mm-hmm. in Base64 would compress a lot better. So. I I forget. Are you on Facebook? Uh, I'm on Facebook, but I don't use it. Fair enough. So you might need a four gigahertz quad core to run Facebook, because they've decided to create spurious DOM elements in uh, their ads 
to try to defeat ad blockers. We see, it was actually funny when I read that because my brother, who does use Facebook a lot, had been complaining how his phone doesn't cut it anymore uh, for using Facebook, and he needed a phone with a better processor so he could load Facebook pages better. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this kind of explains that. Yeah. Um, I guess the moral of the story is don't use Facebook. <laughs> yeah, that's a simple way. So. It's funny, the one comment in there, he's like, it almost be, be just as a resource... Uh, efficient for facebook to go ahead and render the images of the page and send you an image out <laughs> yes yes if they really want to defeat ad blockers that's probably what they have to do that's true you can't really block that you just here's an image of the page yeah <laughs> and then you know try to get clever like okay here's like the the link that's supposed to you know you do the, the image map yes uh-huh you could do that it would function in a weird kind of way yeah There'd probably be lots of usability issues, but yeah, you could do it. It'd be fine. All right. So even if you enable do not track, no one pays attention. Uh, so Safari is dropping support for the do not track header tag. Uh, and likely other browsers will do this too, uh, because the working group behind the do not track header has been disbanded. So it is not, it is not like actively being developed. Mm, I'm not sure exactly what improvements they've made since the initial uh, revision, uh, but like it's essentially a dead end at this point. Mm -hmm. So you know, Apple you know realized, hey, this doesn't even work anyway. <laughs> doesn't work, and then to make it even worse. Uh... They saw in the notes of the Safari release, they said, move support for the expired do not track standard to prevent potential use as a fingerprinting variable. So in other words, it's like, it could even cause you more problems than it's yeah. helping. So not only do websites ignore the fact that you do not want to be tracked, it's also tracking the do not want to be tracked <laughs> to single you out of other groups. Because you're obviously a privacy freak and have something to hide. <laughs> obviously. Yes. So, don't use Internet Explorer. It's technical debt. Even Microsoft says so. Mm -hmm. So, uh, from time to time, uh, the guy who's writing this blog post uh, is asked by customers, how do I ensure that all web traffic goes to Internet Explorer? And, you know, he goes on, you know, this ramble that, you know, using Internet Explorer seems to be the default for all situations. You know, it's the easy button. Because, well, most of your sites were designed for Internet Explorer, so just always use it, okay? <laughs> uh, so it goes into, you know, some of the workarounds that, you know, it's done in the past. Like the standards mode versus quirks mode. Uh, and then later on, it uh, if you accessed a site on the open internet, it re you know, said that, oh, you should probably have, you know, the latest web standards version of the... Uh, browser but if it was on a local intranet server like you know uh, a server in your company mm -hmm. that it would go to the 1999 standard that was broke and you know all these sites assumed was there um, but uh, even uh, the latest browser edge is moving away from its Internet Explorer roots uh, because it's going to uh, be using a chromium base. Uh, and as the name implies, yes, that's essentially the open source core of the Chrome browser, which Chrome adds on like two or three things onto it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Microsoft is essentially stealing that and using that for <laughs> Edge. Works. Yeah, this, this was announced uh, quite a while ago, and people were sort of mourning the so-called loss of diversity on the web. But, That's what Firefox is for. Yeah, like hardly anybody was using Internet Explorer or Edge anyway. Yeah. Or at least people that knew what they were doing. Yeah. And if they didn't know what they're doing, then they're just as well off having the off-branded version anyways. Yeah. So, like, I think according to, uh, like, uh, was it, what are they called? Uh, like, Internet Statistic uh, Companies? Uh, like internet tracking companies that uh, you know yes. gather in stats on you know web pages and everything, uh, that Microsoft browsers are maybe ten to fifteen percent uh, usage share. 
Probably because everyone's using their stupid iPhones so much. Ha! That probably is some of that. So, uh, Louisville. Uh, that has this thing called uh, Google Fiber. Uh, or at least it's going to uh, going to for about the next month because Google uh, apparently took Google Fiber in Louisville out of beta and is now killing it. Well, that's typical Google. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Shout out to Utah, Chris, uh, living in U- Louisville. Uh, you know the guy that we had on there when I first started this podcast. He lives there now. Um, Let's see, I went down to see him uh, for that eclipse down there, Uh, but he had uh, the AT&T gigabit fiber and not the Google fiber. It was interesting that Google had said that part of their decision to pull the fiber from Louisville was uh, because they had made the, they're experimenting with a shallow fiber uh, bearing. It hadn't worked out quite as well as they wanted. And so, like, to fix it was going to cost a lot of money, so they just went ahead and decided we just abandon it and go someplace else. So they're treating it like software and just, like, just delete it. We do something else and rebuild it. Yeah, pretty much. So, micro-trenching relies on a trench that is 6 to 12 inches deep and usually an inch and a quarter across. So I'm not exactly sure if this video... It doesn't like that video will play. Anyways... So, uh, as mentioned, uh, today is International Backup Awareness Day, so back up all your stuff, uh, even your micro-trenches. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, as, as for me personally, uh, buying a house is hard. Yeah, it's a lot of work. So, uh, which it looks like if everything goes well, uh, I will be closing on the house uh, March 22nd. So there's still, like some time between now and then but in between then I want to clean this place I want to clean up my junk (laughs) the less stuff you have the less stuff you have to move yes Uh, and do uh, early spring cleaning there you go so uh, so finally got the inspection scheduled today and that'll be uh, on Wednesday Uh, so hopefully that goes well so, like, I really wanted to, like, get that in as soon as possible because you can only schedule it, like, 14 days after the offer was accepted. Mm-hmm. So, like, this is, like, not even a week later, so good for me. As soon as possible is good in those things. Yes. Um, so, did you have someone come by and inspect your shack? I did have someone inspect my shack, even though it wasn't required because the type of loan it was. And it saved me, like, thousands of dollars because they were like, yeah, it's pretty bad shape the foundation's gonna make it fall over or <laughs> something like that amongst other things but yeah it it was beneficial to me in that respect and it did give uh, various things that are wrong with it too so you kind of have ideas of things to fix later down the road if you're so inclined to be in a fixing mood yeah so uh yeah with my own place i can put in ethernet cables everywhere drill holes cut holes yeah and, like, no one's around to say, hey, what are you doing that for? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, uh... Get a pet? I could. So, uh, yeah, so what are you going to be up to? Well, pro- There's no hunting season soon, is there? No hunting season. Yeah, we <laughs> kind of got through the hunting seasons. and eating deer meat, enjoying deer meat. So lately, then we had, oh, like, two weeks ago, we had had baby pigs born that one cold, cold, cold Sunday night, Did five they... of which died, and then the one left ever died a few days later. Aww. But that was unfortunate. It was just too cold. But yeah. So anyways, before that, we had bought some baby pigs from the farmer of the road, so we had them in our basement for a while. So now we finally moved them out, so we have, have five They pigs. survived. They did survive, because they were slightly bigger, and... They lived in the basement uh, long enough that they, through the cold time, they were in good shape. Except now they're happy pigs living outdoors in the in the mud and the. Except everything. now they're happy pigs. Is that a bad thing? I don't know. <laughs> they're kind of happy, anyways. They get to live with the big pigs now. They found that the world's a lot more tougher than it was in the nice cushy basement. <laughs> it was just cold down there. It wasn't cold down there. It was nice. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's no longer, like, negative 10 outside. Yeah, that's so. a lot better. Uh, instead, 
Uh, we got dumped uh, three inches of snow last night, so good for us, I guess. Uh, well, I guess that's it for the show, right? I guess so. Have a good one. You too.